good to be together in the house. It is. Well, while, while they're bringing that up, we're just going to take a minute and we're just going to enter in together. Okay? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Father. You are our God. You're our refuge. You're our fortress. We trust you, Lord. We honor you tonight, Lord Father. We praise the name of Jesus tonight. We lift up that name that is above all names, that name that is holy. Father, we thank you, Father, for your abundant blessings in our lives. Lord, we thank you for the food we eat, the clothes that we wear, the vehicles we drive, Lord. We thank you for the homes we live in, Lord Father. We thank you for this body that we get to join together with, Lord Father. We thank you for the building that we gather in, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what that blood says on our behalf today, what it shouts on our behalf today. We are the, the redeemed, and we say so, Father. We are redeemed from the curse of sickness, of lack, of eternal separation, Lord Father. We are washed in the blood of your Son. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy is that name. Worthy is that name, Lord. We thank you, Father. We welcome your presence here tonight, Lord. We welcome your presence tonight. We came ready to receive, ready to hear. Lord, we want to say what you say. We want to, we want to speak what you would have us to speak. And Lord, we thank you that we love first before we do anything else. We love first because you first loved us. Father, we thank you for your word. We honor your word in our lives. We thank you that it is true. It is the absolute truth. It is the roadmap for our lives in everything that we do. Every answer we need is in your word, Lord Father. And we thank you for it. We thank you for what it means to us. We thank you for the blessing. And we thank you for the freedom we have to enjoy your word, to read your word. It's, it's open. It's available, Lord Father. And we thank you for that privilege that we have to live where we live. We honor you, Lord. And we lift up the name of Jesus tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Winter Bible Seminar is coming up. Glory to God. Next week, February... First, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, first, second, and third. And, um, man, invite people. Continue to be in prayer. We are expecting miraculous things in this time. Miraculous things. How many of you know that something in the miraculous that that would happen, that will happen during Winter Bible Seminar will speak volumes to people outside of this body, when they start to hear about what happened at Winter Bible Seminar, what God did, doesn't have anything to do with us, what God does through this time, yes. Yes. Jesus. It's, and it's, not about, it's not about growing Heartland Church. We didn't, we're not setting up Winter Bible Seminar so we can pack the pews with more members. Winter Bible, Center, Winter Bible Seminar is all about glorifying God and what he has for us and, and people getting to realize just how much God has in store for you and your life. And it's going to be a, a great time. We're, gonna, we're just going to press in together. I'm, I'm excited. So please remember, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that is a week from this Friday, week from this Saturday, week from this Sunday. Block out your weekend. I fully expect expect Heartland to be here in droves to, to support this. And I know that I know that as we pray over Winter Bible Seminar, we know that there are people that may only make one session, but that's the session they need to be here for. And so we're just we're we're in agreement that that people will hear the call and will 
heed it and we'll be here big big time so be sure we've got some more of these at the back I mean you go I'm just saying you know you go somewhere and you leave one laying somewhere what's that gonna hurt somebody picks it up you never know you never know so be ready for that big time woman to woman this Sunday that's right it is this Sunday that is the 27th man January is going quick you double whammy. That's right, because you get this week and then next week. That is amazing. Yeah, we kind of get the same thing, guys. We get Nobleman tomorrow morning, and then we'll be with Pastor Ken for Nobleman. That's, that's an honor and a privilege. We're looking forward to that. We really are. But, guys, tomorrow morning, 630 uh, until 730-ish, right out there in, in Heart Rock. Remember, don't have to be a member. Just come and, and fellowship with us. Some hot coffee and hot Jesus tomorrow morning at uh, 6.30. Ecclesia, Monday nights uh, from 7.30 to 10.30-ish. Uh, those, those, those callers. I don't know how many of you have seen some of the videos on, on Facebook. It's just amazing to, to watch these powerful, powerful young people uh, move and, and, and worship. Let's not forget... This is the one time when you can have your phone out. I want you to find the Heartland Church broadcast. I want you to share it. Okay, share now. Once you've done that, put your phone back up. Don't go to Walmart. Don't go to Facebook. You don't have to reply to anybody. I assure you we have people that take care of that in our media department if there's comments <clears throat> on that broadcast. Remember to do that. Um, as soon as you think about it, Wednesday night and Sunday night, it's important because that, that sharing goes to your friends. One of your friends shares it. And I know people that share things just because it comes up on their deal. All the better. We reach, you're right, Pastor, we reach thousands of people uh, all through the simple act of sharing. And while we're on the subject of sharing, let's talk about giving. Y'all, I, I really want to continue to focus on uh, our building project. Um, waiting to see a picture or waiting to go walk outside and see what's been laid out outside, that's, that may be the time that you get a Raymond knowledge on what your part in it is, but time to prepare for that is right now. So be praying. Not don't pray based on your circumstance or your budget or your income because it's not up to you to provide it. He rebukes the devourer because you're a tither. And he's going to bring you the 30, 60, and 100 fold return because you're a giver. And uh, don't be afraid of a number. No matter, and the more outlandish it seems, the more excited I get. And remember, Pastor has told us that there, we, we have been asking you to kind of be preparing, setting something back for during the Winter Bible Seminar. There will come a moment, there's going to come one of the sessions when Pastor's going to know this is it. So have your giving ready during Winter Bible Seminar. But that's not necessarily your only part. That's just this first part. For us, we, we know what we're going to do at Winter Bible Seminar. We're still seeking what we're going to do long term. Okay? So press in on that. We're a given body. Renovate Youth is a huge picture of, we have sowed into that and look at how that has grown. Ecclesia, I don't know how many of you put a little something towards Ecclesia. If you don't pray about that, it's a good part of our ministry to, to sow into and that's growing. It's big. We're, we're not about numbers. We, we, we've got, you know, it's not quantity, quantity, but it's quality. We got quality here. We're tight. We're right. It's just, we're, we're, it's just a, it's a tight body, and it's a, it's a blessed thing to be a part of. So keep, keep staying up. Yeah, we are healthy. That's a great word for us. We are a healthy body. So with that, let's sow some seed together. Father, I thank you right now, Lord, that you supply seed to us as sowers, Lord. 
We honor you. We thank you that because we are tithers, the devourer is rebuked. The gates of heaven are opened upon us, Lord Father. We thank you that we are fruitful and we multiply. You prosper all that we lay our hands to, Lord Father. We give you honor and glory. We don't give because of a law. We give because we love you. We give because we honor the fact that you supply all. It's all yours. So, Lord, the tenth is yours. It's set apart and holy, and everything above that, Lord, is seed sown. And we honor you and thank you. And right now, we speak to every dime put forth towards that building project. It is not a dollar. It's not a dime. It's a, not a penny. It is yours. And the whole lump, whether we're given a penny or we're given a $1,000 or a million dollars, it is all blessed together. The whole lump is blessed, Lord Father. And we thank you for not only supernatural abundance for the building project, but the supernatural return. Lord, because you get it to us, you get it through us. And I thank you that, Lord, we, we, we cry out, enough, enough. We thank you that that's coming to us. We are check riders, Lord. We are check riders, and we're big check riders, Father. We, you, you supply through us, Lord Father. You meet the need through us, Lord Father. And we thank you for that. We're excited for that. And to the seed sown tonight, we thank you for your word that is settled and true, that it will be fruitful, it will multiply. We are redeemed from the curse of lack. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Jay. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank all of you for being here tonight. We welcome every one of you into the, to the house of the Lord that we gather in. You are a temple of God. I'm a temple of God. We all have part of the Holy Spirit none of us have all of him but and we all have gifts we all have talents we all have an anointing say this with me thank you Lord, thank you, Lord. according to 1st John chapter 2 verse 20 I have an anointing from the Holy One and in that anointing, I know what to do. I have the mind of Christ. I am your sheep. You are my shepherd. You are speaking to me. I have ears to hear. And I know your voice. And whatever you tell me to do, I will do it and you will manifest yourself to me according to John 14, 21. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know we are not here for any kind of religious observance? Huh? We're not here about religion. Religion never helped anybody. Relationship will help you. And Christianity is, it's a relationship with deity, if you will. It's, it's, it's 
It's, it's Jesus living in you. It's his life living through you, upon you and within you. It's him ministering to other people via you. Hmm? Tonight we want to pick back up. A couple weeks ago we ministered on sometimes you can't come through the front door. You remember that? Do you really? Okay. Tonight will be part two of that. You have a kind of a redneck handout again. <laughs> Sometimes you can't come through the front door, part two. Let's start with the Gospel of Mark, if we will. Chapter two, verse one, please. Father, we thank you tonight for unction. We've believed you and we still believe you for words from the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father, that your word tells us in John 14 and John 16 that the Holy Spirit, our helper, the one who has come alongside to help us, he will lead us into all truth and he will show us things to come. And he'll remind us of things he's told us. We honor the presence of God right now by faith. We're open to the unction and to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we'll do exactly, Lord, what you tell us to do. We won't force anything. We'll just be led. Jesus name amen how many of you know I want you to remember even during these services every one of us are usable we're usable now everything has to be done in in a godly order not man's order not religious order there's a lot of times that it can look very chaotic and it be in the divine order of the Holy Spirit and then man and religion can try to make you think Boy, it's in such order. Yeah, it's in so much order, the Holy Ghost can't even move. Are you with me? So we just simply want the order of the Spirit. And that basically, if you want to tie it all up into one word, that would just be called honor. Huh? We just honor. The presence of God, we honor one another. We prefer one another above ourselves. If you believe God is leading you, if somebody next to you said, I have that same leading, then you would tell them, go ahead. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians. You go ahead. See? So we just want the order of the Spirit. Say the order of the Spirit. Say, I'm open to the gifts of the Spirit. I'm open to be used by the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. That's his house. It was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. There wasn't room to receive them. Good to see you, Cliff. Wasn't room to receive them. Not even near the door. You couldn't even get in. You couldn't even. It's packed to the front door. Jesus' house. It was like a clinic. Truly. Remember the message one day at Jesus' house? It was, it was just an open door policy. Sinners, Pharisees, tax collectors, open door policy. That's where Jairus come, was in the front door and pronounced what he did to Jesus and it says, and immediately Jesus rose up. That's always his response. He got up and he went with him. Uh, there wasn't room to receive them. There was no longer any room. Sorry, there's no more seats. Hey, Ronnie. So basically the report is the usher at the front door said, I'm sorry to tell you, but there's just no more seats. But you can, you've missed the meeting. Well, a good question is, what do you do when there, sweet child of mine, look at it. 
I never listened to it. I just heard that was the name of the song. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, a good question. What do you do when you've been in faith and you've got a core group of faith people around you and you've done all you know to do and that's just get to the house where Jesus is at and you arrive and the, and the usher at the door says, I'm, there's no room. Do you? Okay, anyway. Not even near the door and he preached the word to them. That's important. He wasn't preaching opinion. He wasn't preaching Dear Abby. He wasn't preaching Reader's Digest. He was preaching the Word of God to them. You're here to learn something, right? We're in school right now. Then they came to him bringing a paralyzed man who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. They tore Jesus' roof off. This is Jesus' house. They tore a roof off. I'm not talking about one little tile and dropped a peep scope down. This is big enough to let a big enough they let a gurney down. There's a hole in the roof. Huh? I mean, in your house, there'd be sheetrock and that Pink Panther stuff falling around. But what in the... The Spirit of the Lord is upon... He's anointing me... Golly, what is it? To preach the acceptable... All of a sudden, daylight's coming through. Notice the next verse, don't say, And Jesus chewed him out and said, How dare you do that to my roof? No, it says... They tore the roof off where he was. So when they had, I like this phrase, when they had broken through. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Sometimes there's work to break through. Matter of fact, every time is breakthrough. Now certain graces and certain doling out of God uh, can make it effortless breakthrough, but I tell you, that's a rare gem. <laughs> Most breakthrough is gonna come by pressing and by climbing and by other people with you helping you get you up on the roof and others helping you dig off the roof when you just ain't got the strength to keep digging. Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? And most breakthrough is going to come by, first of all, your press, but then, I want to say something here. Many t We do this every day. It would be safe to say we do it at least once a day. Such as, if these were brother ties, and I said, could I borrow your glasses for a minute, please? Thank you. If I said, Sarah, can I borrow your pen, please? Thank you. If I was to say, does anybody have a passion translation? Sarah, could I borrow your Bible, please? Now watch this. Stay with me here. Does anybody have a piece of paper I can borrow? Anybody? Shayla, thank you. If I can just borrow a piece of that paper, please. Kelsey, would you hand me? Oh. Thank you. Now watch this. We ask for help all the time. But when it comes to the things we're believing God for, listen to me. Sometimes you're just not at the place that you can get it by just you standing on the written word of God alone. That is a step. That's perfected faith. That's God's best. But everybody's not there. You see what I'm saying? Everybody, look at all I got out of that. Not really. I'm going to sew that back to you. Not really. I'll keep this. I may need it. Who's pen? This was Sarah's pen. So many times we, we, off, we ask for help every day. But when's the last time you said, would you agree with me in prayer? Huh? Would you lay hands on me? Well, they're going to think I don't have any. That pride is robbing you. Well, if I ask them that, they're going to think I'm a weakling in faith. 
Who cares what anybody thinks? I bet your body will appreciate the power of agreement. Huh? Be open to all the avenues. Remember all the different methods? Remember how many times they came to Jesus and begged him that they brought their friend and said, we just, please touch him. And the Bible says that they wanted him to touch him and him be healed. Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of the city. Different method immediately. And so, don't be afraid. Don't let the devil put fear in you of asking for help. Huh? Say, ask for help. Ask for help. It's important. But we still ask for help. Huh? We ask for help. Please agree with us in prayer over this. If you've been standing and standing and haven't seen any change, you need help. You need help. Well, I don't want them to think, get, let that go. Don't let that ro rob you. Ask for help. Any sick among you, let them call for the elders. He didn't, listen, elders, I don't want to get way down this road, but there are certain, listen, there's deacons and, there, and there's elders, okay? Will you ride with me just for a minute on this? There's deacons and their elders. We're not into throwing out titles around here, okay? So I'm not going to try to give specific names. I will say Bob is obviously an elder. I've thought it, and Pastor declared it Sunday morning. So Brother Bob's an elder now. If you don't like that, get over it. He's an elder. <laughs> but he is an elder. Deacons are stewards of the natural affairs of the church. We have department heads that are deacons, lead servants. They steward over the natural affairs. Elders steward over the spiritual affairs of the church. It's the pastoral offices. Are you with me here? And so uh, even though you may have a senior pastor, a resident pastor, it doesn't mean, now listen, we don't throw titles around. You don't hear me all the time calling different people, Pastor Heath, Pastor this one, Pastor this. I think we need to be careful with that. When we say that term, I don't know why God's having me go here, but we're here. It's too late now. When we say that term, our eyebrows ought to dip just a little bit in honor. I can tell how you talk about me at home by the what your kids call me. I don't need them to call me some title. You do. Because the title just represents that we have honor for you. you. I don't believe you can tell me when I've ever called you just by your first name. Except some guys at the gym, and I say it with respect when I say, Hey, Big D, to Daniel. I call him Brother Ty. I've n I don't ever call him just, I can't even say it just as an example. It's dishonoring to me. Huh? I always say Miss Kelsey, don't I? I don't just put the K word out there. It's disrespecting to me. So when a child comes up and says, Hey, what's up, Jay? I know how, what they hear at home. Doesn't bother me. I just hope it don't rob you. What do you think you're elevating? No, I think I'm the first rung on the ladder and I'm, I, you're way up there. A lot of people want to be in leadership, but they don't want to lead serve. Are you here with me? That's like people that want a key to the church, but they don't want any responsibility for the church. Well, I want a key to the front door too. Okay, you want about 12 responsibilities that come with that key? Oh, I just need a key. Why do you need a key? You don't even tithe. Why would we give you a key to the church? Huh? Come on, somebody. Are you with me still? Oh, but you can trust me. Really? Are you a tither? Oh, no, but you can trust me. Well, uh, this is healing school. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. It, moreover, brethren, it is first required. Say required. Required. In stewards that he be found faithful. Moreover, brethren, it is required in stewards that a man be found, found faithful. 
The word, the word found in the rawest Greek literally is under heavy scrutinization. That after much intense watching them, that's the only way you can be found faithful. Is, is when not just the Spirit of God, but leadership watches to see how you handle that. How you walk through that. Well, nobody cares. He never even called me. No, he's watching. Are you with me, somebody? How you go through what you're going through has everything to do with how long you stay in that season and if you ever come out of that season. If you moan and groan and complain the whole time, it can take you 40 years in a wilderness that the journey is really 11 days. Okay? It's required, the Bible says. Say, this is requirement. <laughs> this is requirement. Paul said it is required that we be found. Found. Again, under intense scrutinization, under intense watching, examining, long seasons of examining. Come on. Come on. I like the way one man put it, if you can't serve with a deacon, you'll never rule with the elder. <laughs> huh? So... It's important that, because listen, these things are all connected, spiritual things. You, you know, you can have the thought, come on, we're here for healing school. With, in the spirit realm, everything is connected. It's like a spider web. My giving affects, really, my ability to hold certain things. Huh? It's all rooted in the love of God, more so how much he loves me. Then the application, the, the living side and, and versus the legal side. The legal side, what he did for me. The doctrine side. Living side, now me living that love out to others. See, all these things. If, if a bitter root is in me, it is definitely hindering my ability to take a hold and hold to what Jesus has legally doled out to me. It's imputed in my account like, a, like an accountant. It's an accounting term, imputed. And so these things, it's very important to remember. Listen, let me say it this way. You cannot believe, you can, but it's very hard to believe for the spiritual while you're practicing violating the natural. If you're believing God for, for healing of high cholesterol or whatever, I'm, I, I can get lost. In, I'm wading out in water way too deep for me. I don't, I'm not a, a doctor. But uh, uh, whatever, whatever. But then you're violating it the whole time with what you eat. Wouldn't that affect it? Huh? And then they give you a bad report. Surely you don't expect to just feed your face anything you want to and then the, the, the church is supposed to just be able to say twinkle twinkle little star poof be gone in the name of Jesus and you just walk out whole are you with me the Bible says with the same mouth that we bless somebody that same mouth we use it and we curse somebody else my brethren these things ought not be so let me say it this way your sugar's always high and with that same mouth you, you, you eat three heart rock shakes on a Sunday morning with the same mouth with the same mouth you say thank you Jesus you've made me healed I'm whole I'm whole I'm whole and that same tongue and mouth you go out there and I mean we just can't make heart rock shakes fast enough for you are you violating the natural while believing for the spiritual? Are you with me, anybody? That would be like you saying, Father, I thank you, I'm a tither, and I thank God you rebuke the devourer for my sake. My car runs good every day. Hallelujah. And then you go over there to Sportsman Center, and you, on purpose, pull the diesel one. And you put diesel in there, and you, and you just grout and complain because it's spitting and sputtering. And you got a bumper stick on back that says, Jesus is my source or whatever. Huh? Jesus is my source. Are you with me, somebody? 
I see some people, some people they violate that stuff. I understand, man. You, listen, if you, if you won't take care of the pinto that you have got, you won't, you won't take care of a Ferrari if God brought it into your life. It would sooner or later look like trash heap. It's required that a steward be found faithful. I didn't know it was going here, but here we are. <laughs> Say, mmm, good. Red. I got funny. That, we did that in the Marine Corps for miles. <laughs> Listen, people say, well, you know, if I had a new Toyota Tundra looks like DJ's, well, yeah, I had peace. Clean as a whistle, too. Let me look at the one you drive now. That'll tell me, after the new wears off, what your new Toyota Tundra that God's not going to bring into your life would look like. It's first of all required in a steward that a man be found found. Long examination, examination. Are you here, somebody? A lot of people want positional. They want the position. They want, they want the authority, but they don't want the requirement. Anybody that makes sense? They want the authority, but they don't want the stewardship of role of it, the, the, the requirement. Hmm? And so it's important that we're not trying, make sure you're not trying, this may just be answer for some people, I don't know. Make sure you're not believing and using your faith for the spiritual breakthrough, but you're violating that same breakthrough through the natural side of it. Isn't this good? It's good. It's, it's breakthrough. When they broke through. When they broke through. This is healing school. This is the, if the Holy Ghost turns it into a healing service, that's great. But this is healing school where we come at it from all different angles. We break it down. We dissect it. We look at it. Why did he do it that way? Why did he say it that way? Why did he go this method here? Why did he touch them and the next time he didn't touch them? He just spoke. Why did the third time he spoke and touched them? Well, we can make it easy and say, because he said, I only do what I see my father doing. Okay, my question, why did the father do it this way, this way, this way? See? Some people need to feel the hand and hear your prayer. Other people don't need nothing more than a text of two or three verses. But again, you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to be your pace setter and not Mr. Billy Bob Faith Man be your pace setter. Because Billy Bob Faith Man is in a different setting than you are. He might have been at this thing a long time. But even Billy Bob Faith Man is still walking it by faith, or Billy Bob Faith Man can't keep what he got by faith. There's a difference in receiving and keeping. Huh, come on. We don't want to just be able to get healed in a service. We want to be able to maintain and keep healed and learn to live in divine life and not need healing. Come on, y'all. These things are huge. You can't just, you can't, you can't just teach this in, a, in an hour. <laughs> huh? So, say, I am a good steward in the name of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful, y'all? Yeah. Now listen, don't let the devil condemn you. I mean, before I get out, don't think, I've got to get out. So, be text, please go wash my car while we're still in service. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. Make sure Pastor Jay goes out the side door. Mine's parked right in front of that front door. Don't, do not let him see that. No, no. I'm not talking to you. The Holy Ghost is. No, it was you. I heard you. <laughs> He'll give us unction. You might be surprised the Spirit of God. Just something in you said, go wash your car. And you, you listen, you not washing your car... This is my conviction. What else is attached to washing my car? Might be a bag of money in the car wash when I get there. I'm just saying. Let me say this while we're here. If you went to the doctor, now I'm going to tell you what I believe, okay? When I, go to, when I went to the clinic, 
they wouldn't let Sarah stick me. I had some other girl. She, I asked her for, I said, are you, are you heavy-handed or are you like Miss Sarah, gentle? She said, oh, she said, I'm good. I said, I didn't ask good. I said, are you heavy-handed or gentle? I said, because she's good and gentle. And I don't like needles, especially back here and here. If you ain't gentle, you better get there before you poke me. <laughs> well, when I went, they said, you have bronchitis and whatever, and then there was something else. I didn't say, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> well, you don't have to. Your body already has. Let me, let me make this comparison. We're learning, right? It, I, the other day, I took the church minivan to Jason Wrangler. Why? Because the dude is good. That's why. He's, he, he's trauma mechanic. He sees everything every day, different cases every day. I mean, he's an emergency uh, 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 doctor for cars. I took it in there. He said, oh, man, he said, your struts are all but gone. He said, it's going to need new bearings, new plates, and new something else. He said, and, uh, but they sell that in a whole kit. He said, we can get it in one day. It'll be about $907. I didn't say, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Stay with me. I know it's funny, but listen. That's how funny you sound when you say that to a doctor that you asked what's wrong with you. Needs new struts. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. Okay. I didn't ask you to come. You asked me what's wrong with your car. Yeah, man, it spits and sputters. I tell you, it does this. It has all kind of blow by and all that. Well, you know what? We'll check this. Look for this, this, this. Okay, thank y'all. He comes out. He has a sheet. Well, it needs this, 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 and then it's going to need this. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you something. Did saying that change what is wrong with your vehicle? Does you saying I don't receive it mean that your body does not have the flu? Nope. Faith doesn't, faith is not denial. I've been in the Gospels for nine weeks now. That's why I'm carrying just a New Testament because it forces me to just stay in the Gospels. And, the, and uh, Every time they came to Jesus, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? That I might receive my sight, specific. Therefore, admitting I'm blind. Yes, sir. See, we just want to wash this thing away that somehow we're, we're breaking the faith system. If we dare say anything except I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, man, I, you, look, you look real pale today. Are, are you okay? I'm fine in the name of Jesus. I know you're fine in his name. But I'm looking at your pale body and your eyes that are sunk back in your head and because I care, I want to know how can I help? Can I pay for a clinic visit or can I lay hands? What do you want? But I'm here to help. Are you with me, somebody? See, we're not violating the faith. We're, we're, not, dis here we go. we're not disappointing Jesus. We're not disappointing Jesus by saying, man, I just don't feel good. Sarah, can y'all get me in the clinic? I just don't feel, I, something's wrong. That'd be no different than her saying, well, you just need to believe God. Huh? Where's your faith? Sarah would never say that if you know. I'm just saying that's the extreme to extreme. And we can't be afraid or let fear get in for asking for help. Huh? Yeah. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain grace to help. <laughs> the Lord is my help. He's my ever-present help. Help, Lord, save me. The Psalms is full of them. So, so when, when, when the report comes, don't look at, listen to me, because you should have already prayed about the doctor you're going to, so you went there feeling peace about it. That man could be or that woman could be, that nurse is a woman of God, a prophetic nurse of God. So how dare us if she say, you're anemic, uh, you're going to need some, I don't know this stuff, 
Iron, yeah. Iron. You're anemic. You're gonna need some calcium. Not really. you're, you're anemic. You're gonna need some cal. Uh, uh, iron. You're gonna need this, and you're gonna need that, and you're gonna need this. How dare somebody say, "I don't receive that in the name of Jesus"? Well, you know, they might just make a little paper airplane out of your report and say, Whoosh, "There you go." <laughs> well, you go pray about it then. Yeah. If you can get it off the Word of God alone. Hats off to you and thank God. But at this point, you need the clinic. Are you with me, anybody? And you've not dis Jesus didn't go. Oh. They let their faith go. Went to the clinic. No. Because he has God fearing people that love him just as much as you do, and they work at that clinic. And there's doctors that prayed just as long as you did or should about what is my call in life, and it was to be a chiropractor. Dr. Dan Zondag, when he puts hands on me, he believes in the healing power of God. And that healing comes with a boom, and I go, ugh. He said, that's going to be spastic for just a little bit till it calms down. <laughs> but listen to me. That's better than me walking like this. Welcome to healing school. Huh? There's people that prayed and believed God. What's my destiny? I just have passion to be a mechanic. Huh? huh? Even when they're in the church and they help us. And let me say this. If somebody in the church, much more if they're in the church, wants to be a blessing to you, if a mechanic in the church, if a master plumber in the church wants to come to you, or you went to them and they said, I'd like to, I just want to bless you. It is still your obligation before you, listen, and, and, and don't, get off the thing of, oh, no, oh, no. I just couldn't do that. Are you with me, somebody? It, but it is still your obligation to offer the worthy hire of the laborer. Huh? One time, Bobby did some work at the house, one of the many times. He wouldn't take no payment. So he got a, a box of hand-loaded 45 ACPs in his truck. <laughs> I mean, a man's gift. Come on. Not really. <laughs> but listen, that's honor. You, you, you would be amazed how honor can be directly tied to your healing manifestation in your body. You can read Acts chapter 28, about verse 5 to 12 if you want to. Okay? But it's required that we be found faithful. Faithful with anything God brings into your life. Somebody blesses you. You getting anything out of this? Somebody blesses you. Listen, when somebody sows seed into mine and Jody's life, we, listen, we don't take that and go, hot dog, Abilene, here I come. <laughs> Are you with me, somebody? We want to sow seed into your life, and we're believing God. I pray over every one of them, do I not? And once that setting of prayer is over, I don't go, Python boots, look out. No, I hold that before God. Matter of fact, it goes in a safe. And it sits in there. And it's God's money. And he can tell me whether it's bread or if it's seed. Is it something I'm to sow? If he can't get something to me for just the purpose of going through me to somebody, it's hard for any of it to stick. Huh? It has to be able to just flow through you. Do it here. Building fund. Give that to your wife. Just bless your wife. Give that to Caleb. They're believing God too. There you go. Oh, Dad, you don't have to do that. Well, yeah, I do. But I want to. I'd empty my account for you. Are you willing? Go get them boots. One time, listen, God will talk to you at any time if you just stay open to him. Just practice his presence all the time. 
I'm just being real with you. I was sitting on a commode. That's what you do with a commode. You might have sat on one today, so you understand. All right? I was sitting there on the commode, and this was years ago, and the Spirit of God, right in here. This is not the Spirit of God. This is the Spirit of God. He said, do you want that 1911? He's like, I said, I don't need it. He said, I didn't ask you if you needed it. I asked you, do you want it? I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> at that time, I already had seven. That doesn't matter to God. How many fish did Jesus send to Peter? Huh? The boat was starting to sink. You imagine your life beginning to sink with the goodness of God. Come on, y'all. Huh? <laughs> well, I don't need that. Well, I might want to get it to you because I know that, oh, look here. Because, because it's been found in you to be faithful and I know I can use you to get it to somebody else. Are you with me? God made a covenant with Abraham because he knew Abraham would be faithful and teach those things to his children, the Bible said. See, somebody might be believing God for this and God brings it into your life. Remember, it's holy. Don't, don't stain it. Don't violate it. Lord, this is yours. And I will be a faithful steward over it. Isn't that good? Sometimes you can't come through the front door. Sometimes all these other things are connected with that manifestation. Huh? Always remember this, honor is always proper and dishonor is never proper and it's never led of the Spirit of God. If, listen, if somebody that you work for needs to be moved, you, you, listen, you keep your hands off that. You don't, you, don't, you don't touch your employer. Come on now. Well, they're a devil worshiper. Well, you probably knew that when you hired on. Come on. In the same, you, you leave those things with God. You don't, you, don't, you don't talk about them on Facebook. Well, they won't know. God does. Are you with me, somebody? You, you, especially if you're a believer. Don't be talking that hot, hot mess and that trash on, on, on the Internet. If you do, do not tell them where you go to church. Okay? There was a guy who used to go here and... God delivered us of him. <laughs> I'm serious about that. Huh? You, you know where I'm headed. Look <laughs> at Sarah said, he delivered me too. <laughs> that man would, he, I'm talking about just flat mean, flat rude. Cuss you out. I walked into church one day, I got about right here, and he, I'm talking about, he manned up on me and said, I'm not intimidated by you. I thought, yeah, you are. You wouldn't have to tell me you ain't. But I didn't say that. I said, well, good. Good. Praise the Lord. Now, can I go to the pulpit now? Listen to me. Those things robbed that man. And he's been buried for a while now. Way before he lived long life. He would act out like what the Word of God many times calls a fool. And then he'd want everybody else to know where he went to church and call the pastors by their name. And one time the senior pastor said, I'm not your pastor. My sheep know my voice and they follow. The word is imitate in Greek. It means to mock the stride of. If you're not mocking the stride of love, you're not a sheep here. You may go here. Well, I, I, homeboy, I done been through membership. I got, I got my pen. But you ain't a sheep. Not of Heartland. Unless you're mocking the stride of love forgiveness, peace, gentleness, 
Are you with me? It's first of all, brethren, moreover required that a man be found faithful as a steward of God. Found, what's that word found mean? Remember, heavy examination, heavy scrutiny. I had a guy tell me one time, I just feel like everybody's watching me. I said, we are. I'm being watched too. Huh? It's good for us though. How many of you know every one of us need, any human, I don't care their position, needs accountability? Without accountability, you are a young two-year-old colt that just bucks and snorts and poops and eats and bucks somebody off and while they're busted up right there, you're just back to pooping and eating, care less about the person you just hurt. You act out in ways and people are having to live and come through that, that wake that you li leave behind in your decision making. Huh? Boy, so many times I think, Lord, may we make the right decision because there's so many children that have just been drugged through stupid decisions. And they ain't got a choice. They got to just live through it. Can I have an amen? Some of us, huh? You didn't have anything to do with it. But you were drugged through it. Hallelujah. May we be found faithful because all these things are connected together. You can't separate the spiritual from the natural. The spiritual made the natural. Huh? And so let, let's look at this. Let, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's just, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I really don't. Right now I'm just, I, I'm, I'm not lost, but I just don't know where we're going. <laughs> That's right. We started this off by saying, in that unction, you know all things. You have the unction of God in you. Every one of you have the unction of God in you. If you're born again, you have the unction. Hmm? Well, I've never prayed in the Spirit. You still have the unction. Every believer, every believer has the Holy Spirit in them. Huh? And in that unction, he is the mind of Christ. He's the one that knows all the things of God, yea, the deep things of God. He'll tell you what to do. Huh? He'll lead you. He'll tell you what to do. He will show me things to come. I had this thought earlier. John 16, 13 says, he will remind you of things and he'll show you things to come. Say, he'll show me things to come. Remember, that's the Spirit of God. Where is He? He's inside. It says He'll show me things to come. I had this thought, and I was just chewing on this thought. It says He will not speak of His own authority, but what He hears, that He will tell you. He's never one time. This is great, y'all, right here says whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he'll, he'll relay that to you. Who's he hearing from? The head of the church. And what he hears, Jesus say, that he will relay to me. In that, think of this. The Holy Spirit has never heard Remember, what he hears, he tells you concerning you. And he might show you things to come about some that you have authority into their life. But specifically speaking of you for your life, whatever the Holy Spirit hears from the head of the church, he'll relay that to you. He's never heard and therefore telling you what he's hearing to show you things to come. He's never heard, I'm going to put them through a season of cancer. Because if he did, he would have told you that. Because whatever he hears heaven say, that he will reveal to you concerning you. Are you with me? And he's never heard, therefore said to you, I'm gonna put, you're, you're gonna go through a season of cancer. No, it was all just out of nowhere. Genoma, unexpected. Can I have an amen? So my, 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 my little point here is, it's not from God. And I know we know that, but we can't know that enough. Amen. 
I think the worry of what sin did I commit that opened the door for that? Stay with me here, y'all. Come on. Wonder what I did. I think the fear of it opens a bigger door. Therefore, I think just fear in general is the door that allows the devil to come through. Because listen, Jesus is, come on, Jesus has already dealt with all your sins, past, present, and future. Huh? Isn't that, is this good, y'all? Yeah. Here we go. Did Jesus become the curse? How do you know that? Just say the Bible tells me so. Yeah. You always take it back to that. When people ask you that, you, you take it back to, because the Bible tells me so. If you know the Bible tells you so. Did Jesus become a curse? Did he become the curse of the law? Yes. What do you mean by that? I'm talking about the curse that was allowed, permitted to come upon a man because he broke one of the 613 commands plus the big 10. The curse of breaking the law would come, was allowed to, permitted to come upon you. That includes all the sicknesses and all the diseases known and unknown and unnamed still. Okay? Are you following me? The curse of the law. For breaking a command of God, the curse of the law was allowed to come upon you. In that is all the sicknesses that you can name and all the diseases and even ones they ain't got names for. That was the curse of breaking a command. You following me? This is important. The Bible says that Jesus Christ has redeemed us from, Greek word ek, out of the curse of the law. Look out now. How? By being made the curse for us. Watch this. So did Jesus Christ become, he didn't just deal with the curse of the law. He absorbed it like a sponge into his spirit. Ugh. Huh? To the point that he was so dead spiritually, it morphed. Even his body took on the look and the characteristic and the nature of it to the point they said it didn't even look like a human hanging on the cross. Spiritual things affect your body. Here we are again. But this is what I'm going to say. He became the curse. <laughs> He was separated from God between it is finished and resurrection. There's a whole lot that went on there from the cross to the throne. But part of that, when his body's still hanging on that tree, his cursed, his spirit, and that absorption of the curse, you with me? Went to hell. He said, you will not leave my soul in hell. You can't leave somebody in a place that they're not there. He was in hell. He's a dead man, spiritually separated from the life of God. My God, you have left me. He died spiritually right there. Life left him just like it left Adam. So he's dead. He is the curse of God. He has absorbed it. Or I want to say it, rewind. Now, say it again. The curse of the law, not the curse of God. The curse of the law. He absorbed that. He's a dead man. His spirit leaves his body. His body's still on that cross. His spirit and soul descend into the lowest of the lows of the abusos abyss. Darkness personified. Evil personified. The curse of the law and all of it is with him in hell. Yes. Stay with me. Yes, 
when he is when he has satisfied the claims of justice for all of mankind hemmed up in one guy called Adam because all of man through the price paid and the legal way paid through Jesus God can now pronounce righteousness over mankind again therefore Jesus is raised from the dead to prove that man is right with God once again. Now stay with me. That's wonderful, but here's where we're going. Now when he's raised from the dead, did he come out all deformed with the curse? Huh? Did he ever say, after he became the curse, now don't you sin, or, it'll, or God will smite you in the knees? Or cataracts will come. Deuteronomy 28. Where did Jesus ever say, now if you do that? He didn't say, now listen, I dealt with the curse. But it's still here. I mean, bird box. You with me, somebody? I dealt with the curse and I defeated it. I've stripped that old devil. But beware lest you break a command of God. Come on, man, we're getting in the nitty-gritty here. If you break a command, I can't bless you. I'm so fed up hearing believers battle with that. I'm going to tell you something based on Ephesians 1. There's nobody, in, how many of you have ever accepted Jesus as your Lord? Raise your hand up, I need to see it. That's every person in here, including media. Now, therefore, let me say this. Based on Ephesians 1 and many other places, Colossians 1 and many other places, nobody in this room is sinless, but you're all blameless. Okay, man. <laughs> good. Yes, sir. Huh? Bible says if any of us say, I haven't sinned, you're a liar, and you're making God's word be a lie. But listen to me. Ephesians 1 says, in him, in love, he predestined us that we should be holy and without blame and without spot in front of him. The Greek word before is in front of or in the face of, in front of him. Isn't that good? Say, I'm not sinless, but I am blameless. Jesus took that curse, absorbed it into himself by being made a curse. And he took it to hell. He was not raised with it, and now we're living bird box, so to say, and just trying to stay free from it. Where did he leave the curse? Where it came from. I'm talking about, listen, there's a difference. This is so good. There's a difference in the curse of Adam's sin and the curse of breaking the law. Let me just say it real clear. Just, I mean, really, pastor's words, let me bend the nail over. How many of you here are a full-blown Israeli? Raise your hand. That's what I thought. Therefore, the law was never given to you. You could never break it. Am I right, Mark? The law was given to the Jewish people. And Paul said, listen, we, you who were Gentiles never had the law. And he told the Jews that were trying to get righteous with God based on performance, self-performance based in the law. And he said, listen, you're breaking the commands. And to break one command of 613 plus the big 10, to break one with God was to have broken them all. He said, and yet the Gentiles who do not have the law are living their life as though they had the law. Doesn't their living just by nature doing good and loving people? He said, doesn't that make them righteous? And you over here trying to do it by law, but breaking the law, doesn't that make you unrighteous? And the Gentiles who do not have the law. Well, what's a Gentile? It's anybody that's not a natural born, full Israeli, Israeli citizen. We're all Gentiles grafted in by grace. So listen to me. 
listen, we'll begin winding this up. In our covenant, oof, this is so good. This is deep stuff, man. I'm telling you, this is deeper than you, than you really understand to some degree. This is deep. This is this life-changing type stuff. There are way too many Christians struggling with it. Is God mad at me? Does God love me? Will God do what? Double-minded. Just live double-minded. Under this new, big word, covenant. <laughs> covenant. Say covenant. <laughs> Under this new covenant, we've been given one command. Uno. Not 613 plus the big 10. Uno. And that is this. Love each other the same way I love you. And listen, this is what we stay sensitive to. Whatever he tells me to do, I'll do it. Because that is the demonstration of loving God is, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Jesus became that curse. He left it down there in the heart of this earth in a chamber called the abyss, one of the many chambers in the earth. Listen to me real careful, y'all. Under this new covenant, there is no curse of breaking the law. Let me say it this way. It's a curseless covenant. And I'm going to tell you, if the enemy, through lack of knowledge, can keep you worried about breaking a commandment, breaking a, breaking. You have your struggle with that? Just raise your hand. Listen, fear will be the door that the enemy moves through, not what you did. Jesus' blood far outweighs anything you did today. Huh? Come on. Well, maybe if I just do some penance, you're trying to add to the blood of Jesus. And I want to remind you, his work is finished. It don't need any work from you to complete Jesus' work that's finished. Right? John 19, 30, it is finished. He said it on the cross, it is finished. Then he hung his head and gave up his spirit and went to hell. Isn't that awesome? Now listen, the curse of sin is still here due to the fall of Adam. That's one reason the body ages. That's one reason this earth groans and moans waiting for its own redemption, the same as our bodies. Are, we within are waiting the day that this purchased possession gets glorified. But that's far different from the curse of breaking God's law, which would be if you break a commandment, You'll be smitten in the knees. You'll, you'll marry a woman, but another man will lay with her. You'll buy a house, but you won't live in it. Somebody else will live in it. Come on. Read it. Read in Deuteronomy 28. Read all that mess. Every one of them pages I got in my Bible says, redeem from this, redeem from this. Rede I've wrote it 50 times in there. Come on. And it's just important. The curse of sin is different than the curse of breaking the law. Thank God we can fe fellowship with the Spirit of God. Practice His presence. I mean, just driving down the road, practicing His presence. Practicing His presence. We didn't get a lick of that paper dealt with. But he dealt with a lot. <laughs> Spend time worshiping God. I'll end right here. Spend time worshiping God because what it does, it pulls you back to neutral. When, you're, when, when you've been believing but it don't seem like, and, or you do, and it don't seem, just worship. Listen, even stop praying. Listen. Quit studying for just a little bit. Quit reading. Just put it all down. And just worship God. Put on some music that just really moves you.
moves your spirit. Even some that uh, moves your spirit to the point it moves your soul and brings tears. A lot happens. A lot of cleansing happens. Now, you've got to make sure you don't just get into, you know, religion and just thinking of boohoo as breakthrough. It's not boohoo don't always mean breakthrough. But, but there's a cleansing in it. And I don't care what you've got to do to get in the presence of God, man. You get in the presence of God and come out different, I want to know what you do. <laughs> are you with me? Because every one of us are moved differently. But you just, you, you, you just worship God and it pulls you back to neutral. Sometimes, sometimes just worshiping God is like to the soul. It's like a big windshield wiper. Just, I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. So you just need a, a good, you, you need a good wiping, if you will. Are you with me, somebody? Huh? And that's what worship does. Huh? It, it, you get cloudy. You, the, you, the mind can get so noisy. Right? The mind can get so noisy. And there's time, I just, I just leave my Bible in my man cave. I don't even, I don't take a pen or a piece of paper with you. I'm not doing, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, the last couple hours before service tonight, I was ready, but I just told Joyce, I'm gonna go back to the bedroom, I'm just gonna listen. I just put on worship music. And I just lay there and I just be quiet. Just quiet. And I'll feel my, maybe I want to start praying. No, no, no. He's not leading you to pray. You need to be always learning. Be, be aware of your environment. He's not leading me to pray. I've already prayed. I'm just listening. It's his turn. Can you say amen? amen. And it, it pulls you back to neutral. Pulls you back to neutral. Hard to focus on the death threat when you're in the presence of God. Huh? Hard to focus on that. And I want to encourage you. There is a difference between asking for help and listen to me, just wearing out uh What's wrong with you? Always remember, pity never moved God. Pity's a table for one. You'll eat alone. Are you with me, somebody? Pity is a table for one. And there's a difference between the doctor said this, but I'm asking you to agree, or the doctor said this, 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 but I know I'm healed. Versus, I, listen to me again, just wear the Gospels out. They never, ever, not one time did they ever, 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 ever come to Jesus and just say, my little daughter is dying. Okay. Master, I'm blind. Okay. There's no faith been released yet. Master, my little boy is possessed and he's, he's lunatic. You don't find it. What they did was they came with a solution also. And they set the request. They presented it. My, my son is, is lunatic. Come lay your hands on him and cast the devil out of him. Are you seeing what I'm saying? They did not just address the problem. Master, my son is blind. Lay your hands on him that he might be healed. Huh? Jairus, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her and she will live. Huh? I've been bleeding for 12 years, but I know when I touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. They always came, not just with the bad report. There's no faith in you just exhausting the bad report over and over and over. How many people are you going to tell? Are you with me, anybody? I mean, you wearing this thing out. And it's something in your flesh that likes it. You want pity. And pity never, ever, ever moves the hand of God. If pity moved the hand of God, no man on earth would have, would have a need. Are you with me, somebody? It's hard for me to just listen to somebody tell me the bad report when I know they're not about to come at me with one, one ounce of, but agree with me. Because there's nothing I can do if you just say, 
doctor said, I have this, and I have that, and I have this. I'm just waiting. Give, give me just, throw a dog a bone, man, just one ounce of faith. Just say help. That'll at least give me a, a right to, to, to use a little bit of authority and try to help position you some. Huh? Does this make sense? This is healing school, remember. It's important. It's important. These ought to be things you continually rehearse. You rehearse them all the time. You rehearse them all the time. And practice his presence. Practice his presence. Practice his presence. You ain't got to feel the anointing to lift your hands in your home and your... Father, I worship you and I praise you. I just thank you. I just worship you because you're God. I'm not asking you for anything yet. I'm not going to just make a confession. I'm just, I just want to worship you. I want, I want to know you. If I can get with Jesus, hey, I, I won't even have to ask for healing. I won't have to confess one healing scripture if I get with him. I want to end with this. I'm not taking away from words because you know if you've been here at any length of time, I believe in words. But I'm going to tell you this. Abraham didn't have half the confession of faith you do. And I don't even find where Paul walked around saying, I'm healed in the name of Jesus at least 63 times a day. What I do find is men that knew the truth, that did believe and say, but they... They knew Jesus. They were confident that he is faithful. Are you with me, anybody? And I'll tell you, you got to be careful that you don't gain more confidence in your ability to sling the word than you do the one who is the word. Because you're, I've buried lots of people that had a majestic confession. Squeaky Mr. Clean, squeaky clean confession but they were more they spent more time developing their confession than they did their relationship with the one isn't that good and I'm telling you as we keep going we're going to get to know him more and he's going to get to know us more Paul toward the end of his life he said that I might know him he didn't say that I might have intimacy with the gifts of the Spirit, that I might know miracles, that I might know this, that I might know the gifts of healing. No, he said that I might know him. You know why? He is the miracle. He is the gifts of healing. He is the word of knowledge. He is the word of wisdom. He is Mr. Senior Breakthrough. Huh? And if I can get in his presence, well, he lives in us. I understand that. There's a difference between the presence of God in me and the presence of God on me. How many of you like being in the presence of God up on? Huh? I mean, that. listen, that's breakthrough. Huh? And you press into that by faith. You, you practice that. You'll get into that place of his, his presence upon you. And just, and listen, don't get too quick to talk or to pray or to, to confess. Just, just enjoy it. And the sooner you can, listen, that's why with, in praise and worship at church, say we're going to, in, in a teaching service, we're going to worship God for, or we're going to sing songs for 20 minutes. Well, the faster I can get there, the longer we have to stay in it. If it takes us 19 minutes to get there, we got one minute in it. If we can get there in two, we got 18 minutes in it. God created all this in six days. What do you reckon he can do with five minutes and you in his presence? Are you with me, somebody? So practice his presence. And be specific. Listen, last thing. When you are in the presence of God, don't be afraid just because it's New Testament to be specific and tell him, Lord, this is what I'm asking for. Hmm? That, listen, Bar Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Man's blind. Huh? Jesus, don't call, bring that man to me. He's blind. They bring him to Jesus. Jesus, man, such a sweet man, Jesus. He said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, did I, actually, he said, 
Rabboni, my teacher. He didn't say rabbi. He said Rabboni, my master, my healer, my teacher, that I might receive my sight. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Now watch. Your faith has made you well. Is he well? Mm -mm. Not manifest. But if Jesus Christ said, your faith has made you well. Let me ask you this. Are you well? Yeah. Isn't this good? And this is a point that I believe the Spirit of God wants to make. I'll end with this. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. He's still blind. He's still blind. Then it says, and he received his sight. Now watch this. What do you want me to do for you? He got specific. He didn't just say, well, I want to be healed. That's too general. That shotgun, you get specific. That I might receive my sight. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. He's still blind. And his eyes were open. I want to say this. There are many people that know on the inside, I know I'm well. I know I'm healed. Ronnie, I believe you know to the core of your bones. You know you're healed. We couldn't talk you out of it. I believe that. And others of us, I know I'm healed. You can't beat redemption out of me. Okay. Between that point of knowing, I know that I am well. Listen to me. Many times it's just one direction that you need from the Lord to take you from your faith has made you well and, his eye, and he received his sight. Are you with me, somebody? John chapter 5 is the same expect, But I want to encourage you, get specific, especially when you're in the presence of God, the manifest presence of God. You get specific. Lord, that my pancreas would work like they're supposed to work. Are, are you with me, somebody? What do you want me to do? If he's the same yesterday and today and forever, then we can't go wrong looking at how they handled it in the Gospels. Huh? Well, that was before the cross and the resurrection. He's the same Jesus. I just, I guess I'm trying to encourage us. There's more than just finding scriptures and quoting scriptures a thousand times a day. That's wonderful. But you may, listen, that takes time to develop the faith to receive everything you need just by the written word of God alone. There's a lot more methods in that Bible than just that method. Huh? Huh? All the way to stop eating this. That may be your whole breakthrough. Is just cutting one thing out of your diet. You with me somebody? Huh? Yeah. So when you're in the presence of God, make your request known unto him. That's what he tells us, right? Lord, I want my pancreas to function properly. And I know it's your will. You're in his presence now, see. I'm asking for my healing, and I believe I receive my healing. And anything you tell me to do, I'll do it. That my kidneys would function like you created them to function. Come on, y'all. Get specific, not just... You know, they tell you there's 19 things wrong with you. What do you, what do you want? For, I just want to be healed. Well, I know that sounds good. Let's, what's the most, that one more night, that's why I asked that guy, what's the one most important thing you want God to do? Remember? Get specific. Start here and go down the checklist. And if God goes, and heals them all, thank God, wad it up and throw it away. But if you just get the one, Thank God that's gone out of my life. Huh? Thank God I'm taking less insulin today than I was a month ago. Thank God. Come on, y'all. Thank God I, 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 had, I, I didn't have 15 bowel movements today. I, I only had 14. Come on and give him glory for it. 
Isn't that wonderful? I only had to have this much blood given to me today and whenever it was this much. Isn't that wonderful? I only had to take two of those pills today where I was on four. Huh? Right? This touches us, doesn't it, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, sir. Progressive work, yeah. And it's the natural and the supernatural working together. Huh? I bled this much, but I only bled this much today. You with me, somebody? Yeah. And I'm telling you, you give God the glory. You tell somebody. You tell somebody. Yeah. I had less chemo. They, they had me on this, but now I'm, on, I'm down to this. Hey, I mean, give God the glory. And, and listen, listen. Just give him the glory. We'll just keep it easy. Give him the glory. As they went, they were made. Last thing. Blind Bartimaeus. I'm really struggling, y'all, to wind this up. I don't want to quit. I, I hate quitting. I do. I can hate that. I hate quitting. I hate goodbye. It's not really. I hate winding this up. Blind Bartimaeus. We'll end with him again. What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, my teacher, that I might receive my sight, your faith has made you well. And he received his sight. The word well there is sozo. Saved, delivered, healed, provided for. Sometimes, I've been wanting to say this and here we are. Sometimes, and we're going to minister a whole message on this, but sometimes, not right now. Sometimes, sometimes you get what we'll call a healing touch. I mean, Jesus Christ, woo, and you healed. Now listen, more times in the Gospels, you got a touch that led to healing. This healing school. There's a difference between a healing touch and a touch that leads to healing. The healing touch is your faith has made you so-so. According to the, that word, he left that setting saved, delivered, huh? Set free, provided for, whoo, so whole. Now listen, that's different. That's a healing touch versus a touch that leads to healing. He took the blind man and led him out of the town, holding Jesus' hand for at least 30 minutes. I, I, wrote, I wrote my Bible conversation. I wonder what they talked about. You know, Jesus is, because we find another, if you look at the Greek word, Jesus would interview people. That's how he would know how long they had been in that condition. So he leads him out of the town. Remember, healing touch versus a touch that leads to healing. He took him, led him out of the town. Then he knelt down and he spit on the ground and made clay. Now I'm going to tell you what, the process began when he took him by the hand. Yeah. <laughs> he knelt down, he made clay, and he anointed his eyes. No manifestation yet. And this is Jesus touching. This is God with skin on touching you. Why? Because, listen, even with Jesus, the, the gifts of the Spirit, the Spirit of God manifests as He wills. Always let the Holy Spirit use you. Don't try to use the Holy Spirit. Because you can't. You just stay yielded. And then he told him, he said, go wash in the pool. Now listen, here's the touch that led to his healing versus a healing touch. So if you get a healing touch, give God the glory. If you get a touch, which would be step one, a, a, a touch from God, a word from God, something that leads to your healing, 
You just stay with it every step of the way. And do not fret over how is it going to come. You just stay focused on the one from whom your help cometh. Huh? Are you with me? And you just keep giving him the glory. And you do whatever you got to do to keep Jesus on the throne of your thought life. It may look way different than everybody else around you, but you're different from everybody else around you. Huh? Hallelujah. I pray you got something out of this tonight. Uh, it's all connected. Say in faith, I am the redeemed of the Lord. His word is working mightily in me. It is causing an effect. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. I'll ask that you just hug somebody and shake a few hands before you leave. We'll see the men early in the morning. We'll see you Sunday morning. Winter Bible seminars coming up quick. God bless you and be safe out there.